please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The thing, 1981, movie thoughts. So, they say it's good to open with a joke. Probably didn't mean one of mine though, but here goes with how often these guys are abusing the fire alarm. If they had actually had a fire and pulled the fire alarm, someone would probably have rushed to their aid with a flamethrower. Actually, that one time, I think it's like Windows or something, it's like yelling to the others, Hey, hey, guys, come here. I was like, dude, what are you... That is what the fire alarm is for, clearly. I love the unanswerable questions in this movie. I love that we will never know for sure who framed McCready. And I love the, the red herrings. I love the, the way that immediately after, we believe that it's McCready. The, the first viewing, you have no idea. You don't think of him as like the hero. Or, and the way they set it up is really effective. You know, you have the... Basically, it starts with... I don't remember all the names of Fuchs, I think. Fuchs is in a, a fuse blows out, and he's there in his room, and then he... Actually, wait, is it him finding... Anyway, someone finds the... R.J. R.J. McCready, you know, underwear, and yeah, that's that's the first thing, and then th that person like dies or the underwear gets I don't remember. The movie's moving so fast, and then you know, f yeah, Fuchs disappears, and it cuts to McCready, and he's like, anybody seen Fuchs? And you're like. You just ate him! And he's, he's saying, any one of us could have gone, Yes, you did, you! I know it was you! And then, what is it, no Knowles, I think, T.K. Carter, you know, cuts the, the tow line, and comes back and says, I found this! And, and it's clearly implicating McCready. And then McCready comes back, and he's got the, the, the dynamite, because he broke into the... It's, McCready is always thinking in this movie. You know, he doesn't just break in, he doesn't just yell, hey, let me in while he's freezing to death. No, he breaks in to the storeroom where there's dynamite and where he could break in. And just all this, you know, and, and the movie actually spends a bit of time before we know for sure that McCready isn't one of them. It's not until he proves it with the blood test which is really, you know, because suddenly, if we, we go from thinking that he is, and at first we think he's the one and we're like trying to yell warnings, and then, you know, the, the twice clothes of his are found ripped, and then he comes back, and then because of the dynamite and his willingness to shoot, he takes charge, and suddenly you're like, he's you know having people tied up and all this, and what if he is the thing? And finally, it gets proven. It's the the movie holds us in intention all that time, really effective. The and I also love how the movie builds up to, obviously, Gary is one of them. That's 
We never find out who who messed with the blood or how. Doc Copper wasn't one of them, and Gary wasn't one of them. So who, someone, something, got Gary's key and slipped past Copper. That is, yeah, man, that, that thing is slippery. And, and yeah, McCready's standing there talking about how, you know, obviously Gary, if you, I knew it was you, only you could have gotten to that blood. That's why we'll do you last. And, and that, you know, if that, that, make, that's, that makes sense, then they'll be safe. And then, <laughs> what is it? Palmer, I think. Palmer is one of them. And you're like, what the... And he, he's, you know, wiggling around. He stands up and trying to get free. And it, it was really good that they did tie him up. Considering how much damage he does tied up, which I guess is maybe, maybe the thing has adrenal glands just as we do, so being that much in danger makes it all the more dangerous. But yeah, you thought that you... We didn't know that it was going to be that much stronger that it could, that, that just tying it, that tying it up was not going to be enough at all. And, and that's something that really makes the film work. They do the smart things, and it's still freaking dangerous. That is, it, it doesn't get much scarier than that. They're not being lulled into a trap. They're not being stupid teenage girls running directly into the slasher instead of away from him or just screaming or freezing in terror or anything. No, they're doing the smart thing. They're tying people up. They're testing them. And it's still killing them. That's, that is really, really terrifying. But yeah, it, it's wiggling around. It, you know, the, the head comes in and you know, McCready is trying to get his flame the road. It doesn't work. And that's also... You, you can't really plan for that. Sometimes, just... And he's been using it a lot. That was like their main flamethrower, or... It could have been the main flamethrower. Anyway, it was a flamethrower. It stopped working at a really lousy time. And then Windows goes in, and he's about to shoot it, and it's up on the ceiling, and then it jumps down from the ceiling, and he's just staying there looking up at this huge thing, and the head opens, this thing comes out, swallowing, uh, closing the head over his head, and what I really love about that is that Palmer has no less than two times said that he doesn't trust Windows. And Windows turns out to be human, and Palmer turns out to be one of the things. Not only that, but Palmer kills, or starts to turn, Windows. That is really effective misdirection, because it's that kind of thing. He keeps saying it, and over, eventually you're thinking, maybe there is something to it. Maybe... Maybe he's right. Why should we trust Windows? And that's also just really effective, the way the movie shows... Excuse me, these people just... This group falling apart. These people have known each other for... We don't know how long they've been out there, but quite a while. They're, they're very used to each other. And... This... The, the introduction of the thing just completely turns them against each other. If it wasn't for McCready making the, the... or at least some, someone had to be the leader. If it wasn't for that, it would completely fall apart. It's, it's Lord of the Flies territory there, and that's also where the movie shows them being smart, or at least one of them being smart. It shows them being human beings, and then we have the one who is in control enough that he could be the leader, and that he manages to get them to think again. 
Oh yeah, and, the, and the, about the McCready getting framed. The thing about he, when I left my cabin this, when I left my cabin last night, I didn't leave the light on. That was really good, and, and the logo, and the lights on, and yeah, that was the whoever of the other crew members as the thing framed him, went to his cabin, ripped off some of his clothes, stuffed some of them in the, what was it, the oil furnace or something. And that makes sense because it's like, you know, that's where it would show it in, so that as if, you know, to, to, to burn it, to hide the evidence. And then it went back and hid some of them you know, on the, in the main base area. Now, the, I think the blood test scene is pretty much my favorite, and that's probably a terribly original thing to say. I'm sure it's many people's favorite, but just the way it builds and builds, the, the, tension of not knowing who is going to turn out to be human and who isn't and the the, the way we are sure that well we, we know that once someone turns out to not be human they're going to attack that's sort of one of the scenes that's one of the attacks of the thing that we can sort of, we know that it, that will be coming, that when that scene starts, we know that it will end with a, an attack by the thing. Some of the other attacks are more sort of sudden. <laughs> Such as when, what was it, Norris, maybe the, the guy who has a heart attack, that was really unexpected. That... And, and that also really shows... Yeah, that's the, the part of what makes it so unexpected, is that why would one of these things have a heart attack? You're like, well, obviously he's not the thing. Make sure to save his life. And then suddenly he's the thing. And it's like, it was such a perfect imitation that it got his heart condition, and, and you even, you see it a couple of times, it's like, I think twice, where he grabs his chest, and then eventually he has to, he's trying to subdue McCready, he's one of the crew members who try to subdue McCready, and when McCready knocks them down, yeah, like, a little pose there, he, that's too much for him, and, yeah, and, and McGreedy yells, you know, to untie the dock and make sure to... Uh, and... One thing that also really works about the... Yeah, that... I don't really... Palmer, no. Crap. What's his name? The Clark. The dog guy. And the major red herring character. Because you think, you're sure that he, he must be the thing. He, he must be the first one to, to take it over, obviously. Another thing we never find out, who was the person the dog went into, you know? What, I mean, was that Palmer? Was that the, the guy with the heart problem? Who was that? We never, we never find out. The, Anyway, the I suppose from the shadow that might be Palmer. Was there anyone else who could have been? Anyway, yeah, the, the Clark is sort of the, the yeah the the big when you're you're really suspecting and you know you've got Blair pointing it out after he goes crazy or you know crazy he's. 
he's not seeming rational, but he's actually really thinking. It makes a lot of sense to make sure that they can't leave or radio for rescue because then the thing can't be saved. If it hadn't been for him, the thing might have actually escaped. And you just don't think about that. It's He seems crazy. He seems so rational. He's knocking them out of axes. He seems to have hit windows. So, yeah. Then again, to be fair, anyone who doesn't use as a Mac has been really angry with Windows once or twice. But, yeah, the, the tension of the, you know, the guy has a heart attack and you see, and, and as he's being saved, you see Clark sneaking a scalpel. And you know what he's gonna. You, you know he's gonna go for McCready. That's that's where the focus is. And you just see how it's you know, it's getting closer and closer, and obviously it's gonna attack. And then and 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 the, as that's happening, all that time, the the doc is trying to save the the guy with the heart attack's life, and you're just. You know, you're, you're hoping that his life will be saved. And how many big scenes of someone trying to save someone's life with the, the CPR in movies have we seen? And how many of those end in the doctor's arms being ripped off by a an alien mouth in someone else's stomach? Well, okay, there's that one, but... Anyway, yeah, the, and, and yeah, it's, so you, you think that that scene's building to Clark's gonna come at McCready with a knife, and then it, it culminates in arms, well, it, it goes into arms being chopped off. It culminates in the head walking off with those insane spider legs and the nasty teeth and the face and you know, that thing being torched and Palmer's excellent little line there and yeah and so instead he attacks when the I think the Childs Keith David and in, in that scene, you also don't expect, you know, you don't see coming that Clark is going to be shot there. You, you, if you, if you really think that anyone's going to be shot, you think it's going to be Keith David's character. And then suddenly Clark attacks, and yeah, Clark attack. Sounds like a dorkier version of a shark attack. That's the shark that has, you know glasses and yeah and the and and there he kind of does prove that he does he is willing to shoot one of them <laughs> but only one of them yeah you know, Keith David is like you wouldn't shoot me and he you know cocks the gun and then he shoots Clark and I also really love the revelation in the blood testing scene with when they test Clark. You know, when when Knowles, I think, TK Carter. TK, like, McCready says, you know, let's test the Doc and Clark. And TK looks over and the, there's a focus shift and then it's like the, the dead guys, you know, in case you are having trouble, in case you're having as much trouble as I am with the character names, the movie is reminding you the dead guys is who they're testing now. And finally when they get to Clark, it's like, I don't know, maybe half a minute or so, the TK is apparently just staring because it finally cuts back when Annie looks back. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I, I wouldn't do that. I'd worry about going to like crick in my neck or something. And... Yeah, they, they test Clark, and there were no reaction. Clark was human. That makes you a murderer, don't it? 
Keith David is awesome. Just automatic awesome. In, in every movie. Um, I have not seen a movie where Keith David is not awesome. That might more or less cover... Oh, and I, I can look. I love the ending. John Carpenter is known for his open endings. And this is one of the very best. Might be the best. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's so effective. It's so chilling. You see the two sitting there in the burning remains of the camp. And they, they even mention, you know, you're probably thinking it yourself, but the thing, you know, the fires brought the temperature up all over the camp. Won't last long though. And the, you know, how are we gonna make it? Maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, I'm not gonna be quoting the whole thing. Though I could. Yeah, the, the thing about how even now they can't be sure. Because what was Keith David doing? Sure, he says that he thought he saw Blair and then got lost in the storm, but it seems it, it would make sense for the thing to come back and try to finish off McCready, especially seeing as the Blair thing just got you know, wasted. I love the freaking T-Rex head and just towers up over him and the whole it's amazing. By the way, in case anyone wants to know, my favorite creature would probably have to be the one with the dog head. When the, you know, and in, in the dog pen, and the thing that has that little rose or flowery thing that opens up. And the, yeah, that is just really terrifying. I've always had a fear of flowers. It's a, Traumatic childhood experience. Now, the... Yeah, the, the, that final scene, you can't be completely sure that... I mean, you, you definitely feel like you might not trust Childs as not being one of them, but... You, you maybe think that McCree... He's probably human. He did just blow up the you know, Blair thing. And the thing with the, the generator. It's gone. Can you fix it? It's gone, McCready. And that also just, it makes really good sense. You know, it, I guess it's like the, the Blair thing. It was building another UFO, but... Uh, yeah, I maybe finally realized how the heck am I gonna get this thing out of here? You know, this is the problem with building a boat in my basement. Uh, sorry, wrong show. And yeah, the the so it figures that, and and it's seeing how much trouble it's having with all of these <laughs> pesky humans. So it busts the generator because it doesn't need to, you know, it would rather freeze and we'll have another, you know, it, it could basically be um, a sequel that is almost a remake. <laughs> because it, it, the, the, the Terminator, the Home Alone kind of sequel, which is almost a remake, where basically the same thing happens, you know, that someone finds this charred camp, and yeah, it actually has, th there's still a creature there, and around and around we go. Now, the... Ah, there was 
have something else. I quite like T.K. Carter when he's, what was it, Fuchs or something, that was, yeah, I think Fuchs who was like, you know, he was shot and he's like, would you turn that thing down? I was shot today. You know, how long is he going to use that? And T.K.'s like, well, and I don't remember exactly his exact words, but it's some kind of, it's a colorful response. And he uses the, the, what's it called, the rollerblades to go over to the, the thing and almost touches the volume button and then just, you know, sweeps his finger away and that's it. It's just really great. Sure thing, one. I think that's what he says. Yeah. That's... I quite like, now I remember what I was going to say. See? That's stalling. I quite like the fact that we don't really know if... Basically, if, if it's one thing or if... If it sort of splits or if it takes over... You know, does it, basically, does it, does it, is it like a virus? Does it take over your body so it, you know, recycles your body? Does it kill you and eat you and clone enough of itself to make another one? You know, what exactly does it do? It's... I mentioned in the review that uh, this uses a few of the same tricks as the Halloween, you know, things like the, the, the voyeurism and such. We have several shots that feel like someone is looking at. I really love when we see the, the dog. I'm going to go with Jed because that's the actual dog that was used name and because he's a better actor than a lot of non-furry beings who appear in movies Jed looking at the you know, he, he looks at them when they come back from the Norwegian camp hey Sweden it's Norway McCready and it's and and it walks past all the different crew members, you know, Fuchs is like, ah, clock, would you get the dog back to the kennel? And, and at first you're just like, there's, some, there's something with that dog. Why were they shooting at it? And what is, th there's, there's something with that dog, and we don't know what. And finally, when it gets to the kennel, which is also very nicely built up, we, we see what exactly is up with the dog. Now, the... Another Halloween trick or treat is when we see that they're, they're moving their, their stuff out of there. McCready, you gotta move your stuff. You gotta move your stuff out of there. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're moving all their stuff out because they gotta get the, you know, the, the f frozen, I don't know, the, the dead things in there. And the Fuchs, I think, brings McCready out. It seems like he should have just said, we, we can't leave them here because, the, the, see, it says here they're still alive, but anyway. Yeah, the, the, it actually has, it's also quite good, isn't Fuchs the one who ends up sitting, oh wait, that's not Fuchs, that's that other guy, the, the guy who looks like Fuchs but isn't Fuchs, 
is told to think of another test, and he's trying, and then when they get... Actually, maybe that is Fuse. Anyway, and then he dies, and so they're like, what are we going to do now? How, how is it going to be tested now? Anyway, the... Yeah, the the body is is lying there on the on the slab, covered by some fabric of some kind, something a tarp maybe, and you know the yeah they they actually they even bring attention to it. One character goes up and like lifts it and looks and uh, puts the thing down and then walks off, and you see. That it's just, it's in the foreground, it's not, you know, the, the, f there's literally not focus on them as in camera focus. It's on the two characters who are talking, and suddenly something moves, something shifts its weight under the tarp. And everyone who's watching the movie notices that. And you're like, the character did not see that. Oh, no, it's still alive. And then, you know, we get the, the part in the... In Blair's notes, there's still cellular activity in these, you know. And final thought, the scream let out just before they, in the snow, torch the, I think it's Bennings, or rather, it's not Bennings. G get back. It isn't Bennings. That scream that it lets out is one of the most horrifying things I have ever heard in my entire life. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.